what is the difference between squids and cuttlefish? Cephalopods are among the most fascinating creatures in the world beneath the waves thanks to their alien-like looks and extreme superpowers. And when it comes to these awesome marine creatures, it doesn't get more fascinating than squids and cuttlefish. So today, we've decided to look at the basic 101s about these two animals, as well as the similarities and differences between them. Without further ado, join us for an awesome underwater adventure. Squids Squids are aquatic mollusks from the Cephalopoda class and Decapoda form as superorder. They are further classified into the orders Myopsida, Bathotuthida, and Oegopsida. Squids, like other cephalopods, like octopuses, are soft-bodied, though they have a rudimentary skeleton called a gladius. However, unlike our skeletons, which are made of bone, a squid's gladius is made of chitin. Squids and their direct ancestors have been around for more than 150 million years. Meanwhile, fossils of common cephalopod ancestors date to the early Carboniferous period, which stretched from 359 to 323 million years ago. Unfortunately, intricate tracking of octopus and squid evolution is very difficult because most fossils only show gladiuses. However, we can be fairly certain that squids are extremely ancient creatures that have been around for longer than much of the marine life we have today. All squids have the same basic body structure made up of a fin-sporting mantle, a head, a water jet, eight arms, and two longer arms that are called tentacles. The mouth part, known as a beak, is located under the head and is surrounded by the arms. Some species can use their beaks to administer poison to victims. Squids employ two main types of mobility in the water. For steady cruising, they mainly rely on their fins, which ripple to manipulate the water around them. For quicker movement, they suck up and expel water from a water jet or siphon, and the force of the expulsion provides a quick burst of movement, mainly used to pursue prey or avoid the jaws of other predators. The squid's arms help with steering and braking when moving, too. With its fins, siphon, and arms working in tandem, the squid can hover and dart away with extraterrestrial speed and finesse. Of course, the arms are pretty… Uh, handy when it comes to grabbing stuff like prey, surfaces, and other objects. The two tentacles are especially deft at exploration and manipulation, playing a crucial role in the squid's status as one of the ocean's most frightening predators. Squids generally prey on anything they can physically overpower. Fish, crabs, snails, arthropods, octopuses, and other squids are all on the menu for the group as a whole. Some species do specialize in certain prey animals, but they're all pretty versatile, which is always a useful trait in the unpredictable ocean. The bigger squid species, like the giant squid, Archituthus ducks, eat pretty much anything unlucky enough to brush against their tentacles. Some alleged witnesses even claim to have seen these ancient sea monsters devour small whales. Fortunately, there are no documented human devourings or indeed attacks. Unfortunately, there is no way of knowing or documenting every single thing that has ever happened across the seven seas. Squids range drastically in size and proportion. The smallest species are the pygmy squids of the Idiosepiidae family. These wee bug squids are between 0.6 and 0.8 inches long at the mantle, with a few tenths of an inch added by the tentacles. On the complete opposite end of the spectrum, we have behemoths, like the colossal squid, Mesonocatuthus hamiltoni, which can grow up to 46 feet long and weigh up to 1,500 pounds. Interestingly, the colossal also possesses the biggest eyes in nature ever. These peepers have a diameter of up to 12 inches. Good luck trying to escape this perceptive beast. Squids are found in all of the world's major oceans. Some favor warm tropical waters, while others like the icy Antarctic seas. Others are coastal, thriving in teeming reefs, while others prefer the limitless possibilities of the open ocean. Some are residents in some zones, while others are migratory. That's the beauty of having more than 300 species, versatility. Regardless of their home range and living situation, every species of squid is highly adaptable and adapted. In fact, 
squids have some of the coolest adaptability skills. Chief among these is the ability to change colors to blend into their surroundings, to ambush prey, or to warn off enemies and predators with vibrant displays of color. Another superpower squids share with other cephalopods is the use of ink. These critters often shoot a cloud of ink to confuse and distract would-be pursuers and buy enough time to escape. And who are these would-be pursuers? Well, anyone larger than the squid in question. As non-apex predators, most squid species are well aware that they themselves are on someone else's menu. Large fish, sharks, whales, octopuses, and larger squids are major threats, so constant vigilance is a must. The only time a squid is not being vigilant is when it sleeps. However, for safety, most species burrow into the seafloor sand and cover themselves before getting some shut-eye. They also shift colors to a pale, sandy color to blend in while they sleep, which is pretty cool. Another crazy part of squid biology is their intelligence and overall nervous system. They have weird but complex ring-shaped brains that wrap around their food gullets. Nerve endings in and around the siphon transmit and decode messages to and from the brain at lightning speed, allowing the squid full control of how much water to squirt in any scenario. Their eyes work more like cameras than human eyes, which have lenses that contract and expand to shift focus. Squid eye lenses, in contrast, move closer and away from objects, just like a camera lens. Squids are also clever enough to work together, especially to find food. The Humboldt squid, Dosodicus gigas, is known for teaming up with others to corral schooling fish towards its kin to maximize the odds of all of them catching something. Studies on squid intelligence are ongoing, and things are looking promising. So far, we've learned that squids can count, identify patterns, and solve a variety of puzzles. Some scientists involved in such research are even confident that squids are, at the very least, about as smart as domestic dogs. Squids also have a very interesting way of breeding. In the simplest terms, a male uses a tentacle-like penis to deposit spermatophores into a female's mantle for storage. The male dies shortly after this external mating. When conditions are right, the female uses the sperm to fertilize her eggs. The eggs are then laid in a nest site along the seafloor, surrounded and protected by a jelly-like mass. Depending on the species, eggs can number from a couple hundred to tens of thousands. Many of these eggs may fall victim to predators, but some make it and hatch. Unfortunately, a lot of these hatchlings wind up as food too, but again, some make it to adulthood and sexual maturity. Cuttlefish Much like squids, cuttlefish are mollusks rather than actual fish. And not only are they mollusks, but they are cephalopods too, which means they are grouped in the same taxonomic class as octopuses and squids. However, unlike squids, cuttlefish are grouped into the Sepaidae order and the Sepaidae family. There used to be four cuttlefish families, but the other three are now long extinct. Today, we have around 120 species, ranging from the finger-sized Pfeffer's flamboyant cuttlefish, Metasepia pfefferi, to the 11-pound giant cuttlefish, Sepia apama. However, the biggest cuttlefish are less than a quarter of the size of the largest squid species. That said, cuttlefish anatomy is basically similar to squids. They have a mantle lined with fins, a head, eight arms, and two longer tentacles. However, there are a few differences. One of these is the internal shell called a cuttle bone, which is wider and more rigid than the squid's gladius. The result is that the cuttlefish has a relatively stockier and broader build than sleeker squids. Additionally, cuttlefish have relatively longer fins than squids. Cuttlefish mainly live in and near shallower waters of the tropical and temperate zones. They occasionally go to depths of around 2,000 feet, but are very seldom found in open waters because that environment doesn't play to their strengths. Basically, they aren't nearly as widespread and adaptable as squids. Cuttlefish are specialist ambush predators that wait for unsuspecting crabs, small fish, and shrimp to wander into striking range. When attacking, their arms and tentacles explode into action and grab prey in place for the beak to do its thing. Like several other cephalopods, 
many cuttlefish have beaks lined with deadly unidentified toxins that incapacitate prey. Of course, we cannot talk about cuttlefish superpowers without addressing their incredible camouflage abilities. Sure, the squid is skilled at changing color, but the cuttlefish has made color shifting into an art. Cuttlefish can switch color within a second and even roll through several hues within a few trippy seconds. What's even more fascinating is that the cuttlefish itself is very much colorblind but has an eye capable of interpreting lighting contrast to help it change into a matching color. Additionally, the cuttlefish can also change skin texture, which even adds more depth to its sneakiness. It is almost impossible for prey or predators to see or feel through this disguise, allowing the cuttlefish to quietly go about its survival business. Now, let's address the cuttlefish's mobility which is more slow and steady wins the race compared to the squid's rapid pursue and flee style. Most of a cuttlefish's mobility is managed by the fins, though a jet siphon comes in handy when the cuttlefish needs to move quickly. In contrast, squids are more active in their movement, and the jet siphon is far busier because they are less reliant on camouflage. If you're still confused, you can look at the eyes to tell the two apart. They never lie, after all. While squids have round pupils, cuttlefish have W-shaped pupils, which is a marked difference. Common trait they have with squids is the ink, which is used to escape trouble. Interestingly, the ancient Greeks and Romans harvested them for their dark brownish ink for sepia dyes. This is why the rust-colored photo filter on your phone is called sepia.